Hello YouTube, I'm Hannes from Scherps Microphones in Germany and I will give you a talk about microphone techniques for VR. Um, I gave this talk already two weeks ago on the Scherps Mikroforum recently here in Karlsruhe in Germany and uh, some people wanted it in English language. This one was German so uh, I'm happy to repeat it now. Uh, we split it up into three parts. So um, the first part will be held by Helmut Wittek will be about uh, stereophonic techniques for 3D audio in general and after that I will give you two talks about uh, stereophonic and other techniques uh, for microphones in VR. So I'm gonna pass it on to Helmut and we will meet later. Hello and uh, this is part one of our talk on microphone techniques for VR and 360 degree videos. My name is Helmut from Sheps. And I will give you a short introduction into our general uh, theory of designing stereo microphones for 3D audio. So it's very similar to uh, what we do when we design uh, three-dimensional microphones for 9.1 or for or 3, 3D or for Dolby Atmos. Um, so we are using the same type of microphone designs also for uh, VR and 360 degree videos. So let me begin with uh, talking a bit about the stereophonic principle in multi-channel stereophony. Um, in stereophony we do have of course a phantom source which is created by two loudspeakers, by two coherent loudspeakers. Uh, they have a certain time and a certain level difference between each other and based on these differences the phantom source will be shifted to the left or to the right side. And um, well, it's important that stereophony is created by only two coherent loudspeakers because at, in the moment when we add three or more signals to um, uh, this signal, COM filtering will occur and the directional image will be quite fuzzy and not stable. So um, it is important uh, that we prevent crosstalk from these two microphones and then loudspeaker signals to other uh, microphones and loudspeakers. So what do we do if we have a multi-channel setup? Then we treat each of the loudspeaker pairs separately. For example, here we have the pair between the left and the center loudspeaker and this is a loudspeaker base where a phantom source is created. And in this example, we have the wide left and the left loudspeaker, and this goes on. And in order to create a certain image on this loudspeaker base, the same theory is applied in terms of time and level differences. Um, and how to create that image is well-known theory. Let me very quickly run through that here. Now we have the certain, uh, we have the so-called recording an angle. That means if you have a certain um, uh, well, uh, input source geometry on your stage, for example on the stage of a theater where an orchestra is, uh, then a certain uh, area on the stage is transported between the loudspeakers. And this angle of input sources uh, which is then uh, imaged in between the left and the right loudspeaker or in general the first and the second loudspeaker is uh, called the recording angle. And uh, the recording angle can be varied by uh, altering the distance and the um, orientation of the two microphones and by choosing different microphone polar patterns. So for example if I put the microphones at a larger distance then the recording angle is decreased and the stereophonic image between the loudspeaker is varied. Um, this function between the input uh, stage and the loudspeaker area is called the so-called localization curve. Um, and each microphone setup, two, microphone, uh, two microphones uh, form a setup each microphone setup has its own localization curve. So on the x-axis you have the stage and on the y-axis you have the loudspeaker area, in this case the left, center and right loudspeaker. And uh, you immediately see what the localization 
is alike. In this example, we have the XY microphone of uh, uh, two cardioids at 90 degree angle. And uh, here we have the famous 180 degree recording angle. So the recording angle is very wide. That means that the stereophonic image will be very narrow because if your sound source is not as at plus minus 90 degrees, but um, maybe at plus minus 45 degrees, your orchestra on the stage, then it will be imaged very narrow between the loudspeakers. And of course you can set up the microphones differently to make the recording angle smaller. That's what we have done in this case. This is the OHF microphone uh, with a recording angle of 100 degrees. Now your orchestra will be transported very nicely on your whole loudspeaker base. Uh, you can still vary the microphone setup and uh, you get a different localization curve. Uh, now in this example we have an AB microphone uh, with two omnis. Uh, the recording angle will be very narrow because uh, the distance between the two omnis is quite large and um, we have this famous hole in the middle effect here. Um, the same way as you do localization between uh, loudspeakers and the horizontal plane, we now have also to deal with vertical pairs of loudspeakers. Of course, theory is a bit different here. Uh, it's generally problematic to use uh, time differences in the vertical domain you, because you have the certain risk of comb filtering. And also using level differences here is uh, not as easy because you will never have a very balanced distribution. Uh, here we have an experiment of Jim Barber uh, where you used uh, level differences in the vertical uh, domain. And you see that you don't have a very linear distribution here. You have a very uh, large area where the image is not very precise. Uh, but you can put, of course, the signal in the one or other direction. Um, so in general uh, level um, uh, difference stereophony can be used in the vertical area as well. Well the directional image is not all when we are talking about stereophonic microphone design. It's also important that we care for the optimal sound color of the setup and the optimal room sound. And these two uh, parameters very much uh, depend on the signal separation between the two channels, uh, especially in the diffuse sound. And um, this so-called diffuse field correlation is a measure for that signal separation in the diff diffuse field. Um, it depends as the directional image as well. It depends on the distance of the two microphones, on their angular orientation and on the polar pattern applied. And um, here again we have the XY microphone of two cardioids. And um, as the signal separation is not optimal in that, that setup, we get a quite high diffuse field correlation in this example. And it's the same for all frequencies in the x-axis we here have the frequency and on the y-axis we have the magnitude squared coherence which tells us about the quality of the room sound. The lower the better. So what happens if we uh, use the OTF microphone then we get this diffuse field correlation at high frequencies we already have an AB like decorrelated sound field at low frequencies the sound sees a coincident setup of two cardioids at 110 degrees. And uh, this is quite a nice diffuse, diffuse field correlation picture. And we know of the OTF microphone that it creates a very nice uh, room sound as well. So this uh, is another example of a diffuse field correlation uh, of an, another uh, microphone setup. And in this case we have an AB setup. Uh, with a quite large spacing applied. So um, very soon at 100 Hertz already the image gets decorrelated. Of course for very large wavelength um, as uh, every setup creates only a mono diffuse field um, uh, in an omni setup. So 
It's quite nice to play with these mathematical values, diffuse field correlation and localization curve, because they tell you a lot about the quality of the microphone setup. And in order to make that possible, we created uh, the uh, Image Assistant app and uh, browser app. So um, with that URL and also with the iPhone app and the iPad app, you can calculate your own curves uh, based on arbitrary setups of two or three microphones. And uh, please try that. Well, um, to end my talk here, uh, I will give you a couple of examples of 3D microphone setups that are based on that theory. First, let's start with the OCT9 setup. That is a quite a uh, popular setup when it comes to um, the recording of music, of uh, a natural balanced uh, distribution of sound sources, for example, a string quartet or a small orchestra. Um, this setup is based on the OCT surround setup for 5.1 and it adds four supercardiots for the height layer. Um, the OCT sub setup in general is quite popular for its extreme good crosstalk um, prevention. So if you imagine a, an input source from a certain direction, you can be quite sure that it is imaged only in one or maximum two loudspeakers and the levels in the other loudspeakers will be very low. And this is important when it comes to a very natural distribution, when it comes to uh, the robustness and stability of a setup. And of course, when it um, when we talk about the diffuse field uh, decorrelation, which is very optimal in that setup. Um, you also see that when you are looking at that, uh, this is the impulse response that you get in the sweet spot of your loudspeaker uh, setup. When you record um, an impulse um, in a room with the OCT9 setup. And what you immediately see that you uh, have uh, the direct sound and these uh, early reflections imaged very precisely, very discreetly. You see the direct sound in one or two loudspeakers, you see the first reflections and the other reflections very precisely. And here you can uh, really see why this setup creates this natural um, reflection pattern and this very natural room sound. And um, this is very different with that setup. That's the second example of a 9.1 microphone setup. That's the uh, it's a nine channel omni setup. Uh, of course, when you try to get a uh, signal separation only with omnis, you have to space them largely apart because they only give you time differences. And um, of course, you can imagine that here you get a very different reflection pattern and that is pictured here. So very quickly the image gets very diffuse because you now have a lot of crosstalk in every loudspeaker. And um, this Omni setup is uh, very fine when you are recording in a church or you when, when you add spot microphones to the image that then give you the precise um, directions of the sources which uh, you don't get so much when you record only with this setup. Another example of a 9 point or a 3D audio stereo setup is the ORTF 3D. And this is more aimed as an ambient setup because we are looking at all directions now at the same time with no focus on a frontal image like when you record an orchestra. Um, so you see that uh, this is a symmetric setup of eight um, microphones and um, they are placed in the corners of a cube with a side length of, of, of about 10 to 20 centimeters. Um, the polar pattern of the microphones is super cardio, which is the highest directivity that you can get of uh, first order. and. Um, here you can remember our theory of microphone design. When you look at two microphones, uh, these two microphones and uh, are then transported to a loudspeaker base of two uh, loudspeakers. 
and they create level and time differences of the signals in this loudspeaker base. Uh, they create both time and level differences as the ORTF microphone does it. For that reason, this setup is called ORTF 3D. And um, it is optimal with regard to the diffuse field decorrelation. It gives a very nice open room sound because of that. It gives a very balanced distribution of uh, direct sound images. It has a very nice localization all around you and uh, it has a very low crosstalk. Uh, so uh, the level is always only in one or two loudspeakers. Um, the applications are uh, quite um, different. Uh, you have it in ambience recording, but you can also record music with it and, and also amend it with spot microphones. And we have a couple of my, uh, of uh, sound engineers that are applying that at the moment. Um, when you go outdoors and when you, when you record um, it in a, an application where you need a windscreen and where you need a very quick plug and play setup, uh, then we recommend uh, the ORTF 3D in our windscreen setup. And that's the classical uh, ORTF 3C, 3D setup nowadays. Uh, also, this setup uses eight super cardioids, uh, cardioids, but the vertical domain was shrinked to a coincident setup. So we have a coincident pair of two super cardioids, which are aimed at a vertical pair of uh, loudspeakers. Um, we could do that because the decorrelation in the vertical domain is not as important as it is in the horizontal domain. And in the horizontal domain, as you see it here now in the geometries, um, is quite um, similar to what we have shown before. We have a rectangular geometry, uh, but still this, uh, the, the setup is symmetric because the recording angles in each direction are the same. And uh, this setup of eight super cardioids is called the so-called ORTF 3D setup. Applications here, uh, the, well, the first and most important application is sport. We have that now applied in a uh, quite large number of football arenas. Uh, but also uh, music recording is done with that and um, also famous and uh, quite popular application now is uh, location sound ambience. It is uh, used for gathering ambiences for 3D movies. So that was it for my talk. And uh, now the application of this technique, especially of the ORTF 3D technique in VR and in 360 degree videos is explained by Hannes in the other parts of the talk. Thanks a lot.